Today I'm going to take you through a lettering composition created in Procreate with the assistance of these grid builder brushes. So you may have seen these before, I'll drop a link in the description below so you know where to find them. It's created by Ian and Stefan and they have produced this brush pack full of these individual little grid brushes that you can combine to really balance a composition um, and offer a lot of inspiration for different ways that you can lay out a lettering quote. So they're really, really versatile. There's um, lots of different file formats included. So this is the design that we'll be making today, make something out of nothing. And I'll show you the method that I use to make this with the assistance of these grid builder brushes. So I'll just take you into this earlier version of the file to give you an idea of what we're working towards. So as you can see, I've got my grid builder brushes and a sketch of the layout in this file here. We'll start with a new document. I usually use 3000 by 3000 pixels. I like a, a square document that I can use on Instagram later if I'd like to post it. So the first step I do is to just write out what I'm intending to uh, use for the lettering. So I'll just write it out so that I can get a sense of how long the words are and what's gonna be the best layout. So make something out of nothing. So this one I know I'm, I'm gonna be using, but just say I wasn't sure of that yet, I could just also try something else, and that is to just put each of the words on a different line. So I know I'm gonna opt for this version, and I'll just turn these layers off. So now I know my layout, I can use my brushes. There's instructions included for importing the brushes, so I won't be going through that today. So I know what I'm gonna use here. I'm looking for the widescreen brush, and here it is. And I'm just gonna stamp that in the center position. It's a good idea when you're creating a composition to assign the words that you you know that you want to highlight and give more hierarchy to. So something and nothing are going to be the words that will give more emphasis. And I'll just give you a tip to easily center things in Procreate. If you turn on your drawing guide, so that's under the actions panel here, and then we go into edit drawing guide. And now just move your grid size slider to the very top, and that will give you your vertical and horizontal axis. They're very thin blue lines, so I'm not sure if that's coming out on screen, but it just gives you an idea of where the middle of the horizontal and the vertical, so this very center of the canvas. So I wanna make this a little bit smaller, this guideline. So um, if I turn on my uniform down the bottom here, I can scale it and it will keep its proportions nicely. So that's great for the something text. And I'm also gonna be using the exact size for the nothing text. So I'll make a duplicate of that and just move that down. As long as you have your arrow tool selected and active, you'll get this bounding box around the layer and it has little nodes on it that give the center point of that object. So you can easily align that. So now I wanna find another grid layer brush for the other remaining two lines, the make and out of. So I just want the standard straight grid brush. I saw it here before. Yep, that one, the block. So this is a really standard one. This is great and we'll just stamp it here and I'll just again turn uniform on and scale it down. Once I've got the height right here, I can turn off this and go back to freeform. I wouldn't normally suggest scaling your layers this way because you lose quality, but because this is a reference layer and we're going to be using it subtly in the background just as a guideline, it doesn't matter if it starts to pixelate or you, know, you sort of get your edges aren't as sharp from this sort of stretching and scaling. By getting the height right, we can just make that width a little bit smaller. And now I'm just gonna duplicate that and move that down to our third line. And these are really flexible. We can move it out throughout the composition as we're creating it. So that's looking pretty good now. And now I'm just gonna knock the opacity back on these grid layers. So they're just a reference in the background. And you can do that just tapping the end will open the little panel and the opacity slider is in there. So we'll just knock that back for each of these layers. So usually when I'm sketching out a layout, I like to use the HB pencil, which is in the default Procreate set under the sketching brushes. So we'll start with the first word, make. So I'll make sure I'm on a new layer here. And I'll just start sketching in how I want that to look. So I know I want it in a script style. 
you're just sketching out the skeleton of the letter forms to get a sense of how big the word is and the layout of the letters. So I know I've got a little bit of a slant, so I know I want to follow that. And there we go, there's the word make. So I'll just centre this here. And I want make and out of to be the same size. And I even think making it a bit bigger will look better. So I'm going to turn on uniform down here again and just scale this up a bit. And I'm not worried about doing that because this is still early reference layer. So it's not going to be the final piece. So it doesn't matter if it pixelates or gets a little bit less quality. We can scale this to our heart's content really because it's just a guideline at this point. So now we've got a good sense of how that make is sitting there. I'm going to go back to my grid layer now and I'm just going to make this fit the size of the word because that's one another thing that's really flexible about these brushes. You can just make them fit your custom need. So I'm going to get this to fit the word as, as I've written it and then I'll be duplicating that because I want the third line that's out of that's also using this um, block grid, I want that to be exactly the same size. So now I can just delete that earlier version and replace it with this new make size. So that's that can sit on that third line now. So that's great, we've got the make there now. So I'm going to move on to my second line and write something. So I know I'm going to be using a sans serif script and we've got a lot of letters to fit on this line. So again, don't worry about what it looks like at this point. We're just getting a layout, a sense of where the letters are going to go. And I can already see here, I'm going to hit the end of this line really soon. But don't worry, that's why Procreate's so handy for this sort of work. We can just edit and refine really easily as we go. Nothing's set in stone. So I'm actually going to go in and edit the width of these letters and just make them a little slimmer so I can fit more along this line. So even though this is on the same layer, if I take the select tool and I just select around one single letter, I can now edit that independently. So using my arrow tool, that'll give me these bounding boxes so I can just reduce the width and move it around separate to the other letters on that layer. So I just select the M here and select the arrow tool and just reduce the width. And again, just because we're on these early guideline layers, it really doesn't matter about the quality right now. We're just getting everything into position. This is just a really early stage sketch, so it doesn't matter at this point. We just want to get all the letters in first. So I've come to the end here and I see I really have to move things around now. And if I choose the arrow tool, I can reduce the whole word altogether. So that's helping me just um, align this in order to fit it into the grid. And now we've got all the letters in and it's still sloppy and messy, but that's okay. We've got everything that we need in now. So now I'm gonna turn the opacity down on this layer and use another layer to refine it. And this is really Procreate's biggest advantage for these sort of lettering projects because you can really just use these layers and build them up and refine as you go. So you're not wasting reams of paper and kind of going through loads of ink. You've just got a limitless supply. Well, there is a layer limit, but you know what I mean. You kind of can just keep working into it until you get it as you want. So that M was a bit wide before. I'll make that a bit slimmer. And I know the E and the T here I need to be sort of in the centre, around the centre point. And then we've got a bit more room now for the thing, the last bit of the word. So now we're really getting a sense of that span, so it's sort of contracting in the middle like that. I'm much more happy with that now. So now that I've got something done, I will turn off that underlying layer so I don't get confused. And I think you're getting the idea now, so I'm going to speed up the next two lines and um, get the sketching done. So I've got a bit of an opposite problem than we had earlier and I've spaced these letters a little bit too far apart. So I'm just going to pull this G in here. And now that the word itself spaced a bit better, I can extend the whole line and make that fit the grid. 
So I think our sketching is going well. I'm generally happy with the layout and the spacing here. That's all looking fine. But what I would like to do is just move everything down on the vertical a little bit more. So I'm just going to select everything by swiping to the right and then just move them down and the whole lot will move all together. So a good practice to get into is duplicate at these sort of key stages. So now that I'm happy with the sketch, I'm gonna go back into the gallery and make a, a copy of this by swiping to the left and choosing duplicate. So now I can come back into that new copy and at this point, I'd like to think about embellishments and flourishes and how I can better balance the piece. So I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna just have a little play with some flourishes and design elements. So I'll see you in a sec. So I'll definitely keep refining that as I go, but it's just nice to have a little sketch of what you'd like to add and remind yourself that you'll add that later and get an idea of the overall balance of the piece. So on the next stage is to add some weight to the lettering. So I'm not gonna use contrasted strokes in this. So the script is all gonna be really a monoline um, weight. So you know in calligraphy, your contrasted strokes refers to those thick and thins, which is thick strokes on your down because you apply pressure and thin strokes on the up. For the word make, I'm just gonna keep it all the same weight. And the same for the second line for something here. We'll keep that as a monoline weight too, and I'm gonna keep it as a sans serif. So I'll just keep going here and I'll see you back soon. So there's our first word done, just using the pencil to shade in some weight for the strokes. And if needed, you can just swap to your eraser tool and come in and clean up any areas that you need to, to give uh, smoother curves. So you start to get a better feel for the layout now and you can see if there's any letters that are perhaps too close and need a bit more space. So I can see the E needs to be moved over so I can use my select tool and just highlight the E and then just using the arrow I'll shift that over and nudge it to add a bit more space between the K and the E. And then you can just fill in the gap between the connection here. We're still on this reference layer, so don't worry about making it really clean and tidy at this point. And I find it's better not to. I think if you spend too long on it, you become a bit attached to the work you've put in. So just make it scrappy so that you can edit and refine down the line. So we're finished with this make and I'm going to go back and turn this skeleton layer off and just keep our weighted uh, filled in layer there for the reference now. So now I'm gonna move on to the second line here and fill in my something lettering. So I just want to show you what I tend to do when I arrive at this problem. Sometimes you want part of the lettering to overlap each other. So I still want to see make at the make word at its full opacity. So I don't necessarily want to knock it back, but the um, little curve here is interfering with the second line. So what I'm going to do is to just choose white and I'm going to come in, create another layer between make and something um, between those two layers and I'll just fill I'll just colour this in with white so that I can still keep make at, at its full opacity but that loop that's overlapping isn't going to interfere so I can get on with the rest of the lettering. Okay, so I've got this second line something ready now. It still needs some tweaking and I can see there's adjustments needed. So you can just get a sense now of once we've added weight, get even a better picture of how the letters are looking in comparison to each other and just make sure they're all working together well. 
A good little hack as well is to look at the piece upside down. So we just rotate here, you get a better sense of the balance and where things are too spaced out or um, too cramped. So you can start to fill in, even if that letter is that way inclined, you could even make it thicker in certain points, especially if you're using a script, you can make things sort of fit together a bit better. I don't know why it works like that. I think it's just some weird sort of thing where if you're looking at something too long, you just, just become a little bit um, desensitized. And if you flip the script or, you know, just change perspective, you kind of get a new view on it. So it definitely does work. So I'd recommend trying that in your own projects. So I'm happy enough with that for now. So I'm going to move on to the next line. Okay, so that's out, out of layer there now. And you may have noticed I just used that trick before with the white, just to distinguish between these letters a little bit better. And so I'm just gonna create like another um, white layer. So this F isn't overlapping with our next line here. And again, just creating a new layer. Everything here, every word is on a new layer as I've got it set up at the moment because it just allows us to keep things really flexible. So Procreate's great for that. And I just want to make sure I can really see the curve of the something at the top there and the, the curve of, um, at the bottom of the M. So it's not too late to sort of even move things around to that degree. So I'll just select the guideline, I'll select that grid brush layer and the make and just move that up slightly to get a bit more space between those two lines. Okay, so I think you get the idea now and I'm going to go back to a previous version where I got a little bit further along. So you can see we've got our main sketch in place. I've got a good idea of where the lettering is going and the thickness of everything. So now we can even turn our grid layer off because we've got everything in place and um, it's fitting nicely. So I'm gonna go down and turn the grid off. I had it in a group here, so I can just use this one visibility arrow to the side and that will turn everything off. And I'm also gonna turn off my drawing guide here that was giving us those center points. So you just, in the same way, you just turn off the drawing guide in the panel. And now it's my favorite part of a lettering piece, which is the refining part, so the inking state. So I'll turn the opacity back on this make layer. For inking lettering, I really enjoy using my copper plate brush that's available on the website under the copper plate duo pack, but really you could use any brush you like, as long as it kind of has a clean edge, if that's what you're after, that's why I like this one. But you could even use a monoline or the script brush, which is available in the calligraphy default set is a good one as well. We're just gonna be coloring this in with the same thickness, so it's not the pressure sensitivity that we need for this, it's really just the smoothness. So I'll get going with that on a new layer here and I'll see you in a minute. So I have the outline of the word now for make and I'll show you a quick trick that saves you a bit of time when you're filling in is to color drop. So as long as the shape itself is fully closed and there's no gaps, you can drag the color circle into the shape and it will fill that for you. So it just saves you individually kind of coloring in the body of the layer. Just drag your color circle in and it will fill that entirely. The shape isn't closed, you fill the entire layer, so if that happens you can just two finger tap to undo, but otherwise you just make sure that your shape is closed and that ink will fill the area. So I hope that gave you some inspiration and you can try out some compositions in Procreate yourself. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.